ba -da -ba -ba. Whew, I just ran up the stairs. That's vicious. Sometimes. Most of the time. You know, even if you're in like good shape, you run up the stairs. Mm, yeah. Hey, welcome back to Modern Housewife. It's like evening. I know it doesn't look like evening, but it's like 4.30 and I've already put in like a full day's work. A little bit run down tonight, a little exhausted over my day, but I still wanted to do this video for you guys. So I wanted to get this in really quick because it is a collaboration. Do a nervous cup of coffee? It's mostly, almost. Okay, seriously, you guys, Echo? Randomly talks to me. No. Okay, I swear it like triggers um, certain words that I say, like government or homeschool. <laughs> I swear they like start listening and she like starts talking to me. It is the creepiest thing. Give you the rest of what I have and make this cool video. It is in collaboration with April from The Simple Rugged Path. She's our host and she's been doing kind of a collaboration over curriculum reviews, vocab spelling curriculum review. And so I wanna show you guys, because I do have three different grades and three completely different learners, I wanna show you guys what we're doing for our vocab and spelling this year. start out with the kids that I have and I want to talk just a little bit about what we're kind of doing because of certain things. I've got Brooklyn. She's my first grader. We are still working on kindergarten stuff. She is just six. Some of the stuff like with math, she's definitely working ahead of the curve as far as it comes to like language arts and vocab and spelling. Uh, we are still struggling with that and not because she couldn't do it. Uh, it's because she doesn't want to do it. <laughs> she is my daydreamer. She would much rather like look out into the far universe and then color and create a story. Definitely very artsy in the coloring sort of form of way. Dress up as the character and put on a play to actually have her sit down and either read a book or write a story has been um, challenging to say the least. Getting a hold on grasping phonics so that she can work a little bit more independently. She's not very she's not very independently working right now when it comes to that. But then I have Silas and Silas is my seven year old. I guess he's almost eight. But Silas Silas kind of takes off. Um, the last time I tested him, he did test at a seventh grade reading level. He will pick out books in the library that don't even interest me. He reads constantly, so I have that. And then for Lexi, she is almost a nine and considered to be in third grade. We have just recently, within the last year, realized that she is close to legally blind in her left eye. Um, I've always known she's really struggled with reading. She's fantastic at math, but she really Really struggles with reading. What's called a lazy eye, but it's on the inside. You can't see it from the outside. The doctor that she saw actually said that you would really never know and she wouldn't either because her right eye has taken over so much for that, like since she was born, that she actually sees pretty good as long as she can use both eyes. And you cover up her right eye and she will tell you it's pretty much black. Sometimes she can focus in on color, but as far as words and stuff, it it doesn't happen. So that was actually last June. She was supposed to be seen again um, at the beginning of this year, which we did. And when we did, they found out that because the right eye was doing so much extra work from the left eye that it had actually declined in its health. And so she actually was prescribed glasses and um, just to help with the, the over stimulating of the right eye. It's not gonna help the left eye at all. And so the help the right eye. She patches her good eye for a couple hours a day. She's supposed to, that will help kind of strengthen the left eye. And then she also has a follow-up appointment in April. Not only is she somewhat dyslexic, but she will hop around on a page. She loves to read. She loves her little books. She loves her books, but she struggles with that. So all that to say, I mean, I know this is a curriculum review video, guys. I'm so sorry, but I just I just want to explain my kids to you. One thing we do for our vocab and our spelling, we do, I do all the way across the board, is this thing called sequential spelling. So we actually decided to do it online. I pay for credits and I am able to purchase where there's someone that actually speaks it to them. So I'm kind of hands off when it comes to that, which is really nice. Um, Brooklyn just started it, so she's only on day two. They go into their sequential spelling. Day one, the guy will say, spell in, and then he will speak a sentence. So she'll type in, in, I-N, enter, and then he'll go spell pin, and he'll go through that. Spell sin, 
and he'll read a sentence and then he puts them together and he says spell spin so then they have to go through and look up on a dictionary the meaning of in so i n and i n n and so they write what i've been having them do is they write the definition and then they write the like they write a sentence that would support that definition specifically sequential spelling is to help dyslexic children and i've heard from every doctor most kids are dyslexic until they're eight years old so i'm actually having all of them do it and they can go as fast as they want they can go as slow as they want and it's totally fine so silas can go just as fast as he wants. it will still bring a really good foundation of spelling for him um he does not struggle with it he he sometimes laughs at the words that i give him but i feel like he is still a seven-year-old boy and he can still have that foundation of spelling so sequential spelling is awesome we love it super much so far because it is just a quick probably 15 minutes they spend on their spelling and it's pretty much hands off for me. Okay, so this is so exciting. So this is my favorite. I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do for the kids language art. Like they had finished their language arts and we were kind of starting a new semester and I really wanted to find something um, that they could be engaged with. But I found this is a, this is a brand new curriculum. And so I don't, I doubt there's that many um, reviews out there yet. And I wanted to review this with you. Disclaimer, I bought this one. The, the one that I'm going to show you, I have ones on order right now. And I may do another video when I can show you that to you guys. I ordered this one and I ordered way beyond our understanding. So Lexi is obsessed with A Wrinkle in Time. Really wanted to read the book. Well, wanted mommy to read the book with her. When I got online to look at some new languages for the kids this semester, I saw this brand new language curriculum. It was one of them was based around A Wrinkle in Time. And so I thought, oh my goodness, this is perfect. And I clicked on it and it said it's for a sixth grade level. You know what? Nope. We're going to dive into it. I'm going to do it with you. It'll be so awesome. We'll read the book. We'll do the booklet and then we'll go to the movie. You know, it'll be so fun and happy. No, I love this curriculum. I just bought it for the third grade. So I bought it for Silas and I bought it for Lexi. Each booklet is based around one book. It's a unit study based around one book and it's supposed to take anywhere from six to eight weeks. Love this. You guys, this is amazing. For your kids who love reading and to read like good classic books, this is perfect. Total language plus. I can't even say enough good things about it. Okay, so let me explain this to you because this is what is awesome about this book. It covers reading. It covers vocab. It covers spelling, it covers grammar, it covers enrichment writing. This thing is awesome. Way beyond our grade level that we should be at. We did the, we started doing, we did like three days and I was like, oh, pumpkin. <laughs> this is way beyond mama's grade level. She loves her book. We're gonna keep reading the book, A Wrinkle in Time. It's not horrible. She really struggles with it, but I've been helping her with it. This book is definitely a sixth to seventh grade level. There are third and fourth grade level books. That's what I'm getting for my kids. We're gonna start at the bottom and we're gonna work our way up because this is amazing. I'm gonna explain this to you. I'm gonna show this to you because if you're a mama like me, you're gonna love this. Okay. It is filled with so many yummy nuggets. Um, it goes through the author, the book profile, and then it has each day. It's supposed to take you a good six to eight weeks to go through these books. This is the year enrichment writing where it has all kinds of different projects that you can do. And it even says on top, this is for you to pick from. They don't expect you to do all these projects because they are extremely in depth and I love love it they have the reading worksheets these are the reading worksheets for each chapter reading comprehension so that you've read the chapter and then you can kind of understand where they're coming from they have vocabulary worksheets so they have all of these different words we started this okay we started this here's the spelling and the vocabulary words okay listen <laughs> here's the deal my third grader is half blind and she struggles with words like calf okay so assimilate, delinquent, disillusion, exclusive, inadvertent. Okay, those were flipping tough. Perfect for a sixth, seventh grader. So they have all of these different activities that you do. Pushes for extracurricular discussion. It is Christian, mind you. Um, how would he, like this one, find situations when Jesus felt some of the same emotions you feel, like love, anger, sadness, and joy. You have to go to the Bible. It's not in this book. It's not in this book. You have to go out and about to different things. It's got like little pictures that they can do. So you're gonna have to get magazines or print stuff offline. Those are projects that you can do. So it's got the vocabulary, all the worksheets that they're supposed to do throughout the week. It's got puzzles. This is all a spelling worksheet. So it's got questions, parts of speech, adjectives, verbs, noun, 
um, choose five spelling words and write them as adverbs, hidden words, spelling review. Then they've got the grammar worksheets and it's dictions. They have dictions. They're taken like, this one's taken from the Bible, that one's taken from the Bible, that one's from the actual book. Write paragraphs. Oh, I get so excited. I get so, I love this. I love this book. And so then it goes on to the next. So enrichment writing, they'll have the different things like personal thinking and then there's projects and then they can do like pictures, uh, pen and paper, really good thought provoking questions all while reading this book. What I love about this is that it's all combined. Multiple grades, multiple children, multiple times. I love these books that compile everything into one. This develops a biblical worldview and it evaluates the depth of their spiritual maturity. And I just loved how it pushes parents to actually have some really great conversations. So that's what we do. That's our vocab and our spelling. It's going to be our vocab and our spelling through this. I'll do an unboxing because I ordered a lot of stuff. Super excited about this. I cannot wait. The kids are doing, um, the first book they're going to do is Shiloh. That's a little beagle puppy. So you guys go down below, check out the playlist of the other people that are participating in this collaboration. They're also doing a vocab and spelling curriculum review. Um, did I missed out on the first couple ones, but hey, that's what happens when you take a siesta. It is what it is. And I was just super excited to jump on board with this one. I really wanted to do this one because I wanted to show you guys this book. Very impressed. Um, if you guys have any questions, you guys can comment down below because I'm really excited to see if they can kind of keep up with it because it'll be the third, fourth grade material instead of the sixth, seventh grade material. Let's be honest, I hope I can keep up with it. Let me know what kind of vocab and spelling you guys use. What have you guys found to be helpful for your kids? So remember, like, comment, share, subscribe. I don't really care. Somebody's bringing me a crying baby. <laughs> you think you want to see your mama? Yeah, he's crying. Oh wait, what? Well, we dealt with the crying. You're not supposed to cry on me.